Good afternoon and welcome. This is Freewheeling and as you can see with me straight away, I have my guest, that's Martin Schwenk, who is the MD and CEO at uh, Mercedes-Benz. And uh, he's joining us right now. Let me turn that off. Uh, yeah, he's joining us right now for a live interaction. Martin, good afternoon and welcome. Hey, good afternoon, Sid. How are you? I'm good. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you for your time and agreeing to do this crazy thing as well. Um, it's becoming like a new normal for us, I think, to be uh, digitally streaming our content. It definitely gets like this. However, it's still very new for me to do interviews like that. Uh, it still feels strange, uh, these in the accents, but in the daily business, I'm actually already quite used to it. Yeah, yeah I can imagine that. In fact, that's what we will be talking about uh, today with uh, Martin. The whole idea of doing this is to sort of bring you up close with, uh, with people and uh, get their, uh, you know, instant sort of uh, answers to you. I can see a lot of you have already logged in. So if you have any comments or questions, please do start uh, asking them now. Um, I'm going to quickly initiate that. But uh, remember that uh, initially, the idea was to also get uh, Martin to just uh, share a few things with us. So Martin, let me start by asking you, uh, this current situation, it's obviously extremely tough. There's no doubt about that. It's also unprecedented. I mean, it's not the kind of stuff that you necessarily plan for or have any kind of, uh, you know, um, future plan, future proofing for. Uh, so when you get thrown at the deep end like that, uh, do you find that it's, it's also a time when you can really see what you're made of in a sense as a company? Well, I think, as you mentioned, it, it is really hitting everyone hard. Uh, and I think it's unprecedented, as you, unprecedented, as you say, everyone's sitting at home um, and uh, having, and that's not only here in India. I mean, wherever I reach out, be it colleagues, uh, I call the guy in Malaysia, I talk to the one in Germany, anywhere in the world, they sit home. And that's very, very unusual. Um, yes, I would say there's a lot of uh, spirit you can feel. And then you also feel how your company is, is set up. One thing is for sure, um, we always uh, promote the idea of our company being like a family. Um, and I can feel a lot of that uh, now as well, the interaction with the employees, but also the interaction with the community that is all triggered now um, by, by the, the situation itself. And I clearly would say uh, we can see how we pull together there. Um, on the other hand, it still remains a very strange and also to some extent a scary situation. Oh, extremely scary. And uh, the bigger reason for that, I think, is that we still don't know uh, when this all goes away, when it ends. And I think uh, that is why it's scary. But um, the, the question that is maybe cliched, uh, but I will ask you anyway, is uh, except for making the cars and except for, of course, selling them, um, does everything try and stay business as usual? I wouldn't say exactly business as usual. There's a lot of things uh, that are different than normal. I, let me start with simple things. I mean, every day, uh, we have uh, crisis management meetings. Yeah, So around 10 o'clock, the entire leadership team of MB India gets together and we discuss and assess the situation based on uh, the global reports, based on local reports, and based on uh, our own uh, understanding how the situation will further develop and what we need to, to prepare. So that's very different than normal. But obviously what we try to do in the, in, in the context of the company, we, we try to continue uh, working and that is in several aspects. Uh, on the one hand, we do planning, we do strategies, we have a lot of regular meetings, we have board meetings, we discuss CSR activities surely more intense than or intensively than we would usually do. Uh, and then obviously with the knowledge that our people are at home, uh, they work from home, that's also very different uh, to them. So there's a lot of uh, reaching out to, to the employees happening. Um, and then if you say business as usual, yes, in one sense, for example, I give you an example, we have usually around this time, we have a town hall, we bring everyone together into our uh, center of excellence. Uh, and then there's like four or five hundred people together and, and, and we share the business development. So business as usual means now we do the same thing virtually. So we set up a video conferencing with, with the Zoom tool, actually. Um, we had like 550 people uh, dialing in and we shared uh, the status of the company and obviously the focus is then more on the current situation than it would be on general business development as usual. Uh, but so it goes, uh, on the one hand, we really try to, to keep uh, the momentum flowing. We try to uh, work uh, as we do normal, but at the same time, 
we are not oblivious to what's going on around us. Uh, we also have different uh, um, the focal focal areas obviously moving as well with with the situation. All right, I want to quickly tell you that there's lots of people who have already started to join and tune in. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of people saying hello to you as well. There's Kiran, there's Dritiman, there's Srinath, there's Niaz. Um, so you might want to quickly also say hello to them. Hello, everyone. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't see you. Yeah, but uh, I would suppose uh, I can at least give you some some information if you're interested and interact like this with you. Well, I can tell you there are already a lot of questions that are coming in. So. I'm going to pause on that, uh, you know, asking you those questions because the other thing I want to ask you is that what you mentioned, the fact that this is also a tough time. I mean, as a company, you can have policies, you can have ideas, plans, uh, which are ever evolving. But how do you how do you deal with it at a human level? I mean, for HR or for others in the company, even yourself as a leader, uh, to make sure that this doesn't sort of start messing with people's minds. It isn't easy to break from your usual routine and suddenly start working from home. I think what is important is that uh, you still have some kind of ramp up. Let me start with the work from home part. Uh, we always had had a work from home policy that allowed uh, uh, employees to work several days a month uh, from home. And we were encouraging actively that uh, employees actually use that. And we had quite a good use uh, take rate on, on that already in the past. And then almost a week before the actual lockdown happened, we really pushed uh, a lot that people would use that uh, that opportunity. So already around 16th, 17th of March, we actually started with having people working from home and create gaining experiences that we then also use later on. I think that's that's the work from home part. There is a lot of connections you need to keep with your employees. That's very important that you stay connected. And I know every team has very regular uh, meetings. Uh, to follow up, to discuss, and then obviously goes past and beyond the normal work. It's also about the personal well-being. Are you safe and secure? What can we do there? And that's, I think, the second uh, major element you have to take care of. We have to put uh, people's mind uh, at rest in that sense that we make sure that they feel safe and that they be taken care of. And I think that's also was one of our core messages when we did our town hall. It's about uh, safety first for employees. Uh, obviously for customers as well and for the community and, and uh, being safe for employees. That means that we already before the shutdown, we completely changed all the sanitation protocols. Uh, every uh, employee uh, got hand sanitizers from, from the company. And right now, for example, we prepare for a potential ramp up again. And uh, we're introducing and discussing a lot of protocols that will then go into force uh, as soon as we have the chance to, to go back to work. Um, and I think that's very important. Uh, on the one hand, uh, be feeling that uh, the leadership is interested in, 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 in the individual safety and also considers the individual concerns. Um, on, on the other hand, uh, that we uh, keep business going. It's important also to keep the health of the company going. It, it's important also for people that they can add value um, and they can work because I mean, nobody wants to sit at home and do nothing. So we have to um, engage in working and then also we do a lot of training for example we have set out an entire curriculum for online training with different elements that goes from health uh, to online tool usage uh, to to self-management to technical uh, content so so a full catalog of uh, initiatives is out there and i know that a lot of people appreciate that that's also a way to uh, stay connected to upskill yourself and and also make the best out of it. I mean, at the end, it's about making the best out of it. Um, I think for every one of us, uh, assuming that we can stay, stay safe. Yeah, absolutely, and that is the paramount uh, or the most important thing to remember here. Uh, one quick thing about you mentioned customers and the fact that your sanitization uh, protocols have also gone uh, undergone a huge change. Uh, when this starts to open up, what becomes the first approach uh, for you? I mean, is it going to be about existing customers? Is it going to be about your dealerships and network? Is it going to be about um, trying to quickly put together some of the plans for upcoming products? I think, uh, you know, when it opens up, then we already have done a lot. Yeah? yeah, because right now we have a clear plan, which means uh, if we assume uh, by mid of next week with the first, uh, um, how can I say, restrictions uh, be reduced, uh, then we already have the protocols for employees and for dealers uh, communicated. We uh, we have not only the protocols we also discuss and uh, will support to provide uh, the say the, the sanitation tools. The uh, we will of course use masks 
um, and stuff like that. So a lot of preparation happens there already, and that has to happen. That's priority one that uh, um, everyone feels safe in their workspace. And that's also important then for the customers eventually. Uh, they want to be clear that uh, when they when they bring a car to the service or if, if they're interested in a new car, that there is a, 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 an appropriate protocol in place which makes sure that the car is disinfected and in a condition that there is no risk of contamination. So that's definitely something which is like a literally hygiene factor we, we need to uh, front run to make sure that we are there when it starts. Then obviously depending on the streams you are in, uh, of course there's a lot of customers who booked cars in, in March uh, who couldn't then eventually take the car um, and a lot of these orders, they uh, they are open and the customers are interested in getting the cars um, and, and they're hoping that everything goes fine with that. So, of course, uh, the first reach out uh, to these customers will happen. Um, by the way, it's not happening only then in, say, 10 days or so. The, con the connect is there uh, all the time, I would say, but uh, then it becomes clear that uh, who wants his car when, under which condition. So uh, this, this needs to be facilitated then for the customer front and first. And then, of course, you have the service part of it. Uh, right now, we, of course, have still uh, our customer uh, helplines uh, available, and we do wherever we can. We do support on roadside assist and so forth. Uh, and then uh, maintenance and repair of vehicles will be also of a major concern. We know from other markets that uh, uh, individual transportation will definitely uh, uh, be very important to customers uh, when they are able to commute again. Um, it will uh, certainly for the, the, our customers also be a preferred mode of transport um, and you will see then obviously uh, that they need their cars being available. So there is a lot of focus then also to make sure that uh, workshops and so forth uh, start in a smooth ramp up. So that's the dealer end, but obviously uh, us as uh, the function here in, in Pune, in the headquarters, so to say, uh, we need to make sure that the cars, uh, are the new cars are being built, that they are deployed to uh, the dealerships. And obviously, most interestingly, we will work on further launches and make sure that we can uh, fulfill what we have planned for this year, which is obviously a little bit more uh, dicey now under the under the current situation. Well, I sort of preempted that, and of course, happily goofed up and had my uh, mailbox on air. But the idea was to to show show this picture. Um, this was uh, this is you and Santosh standing with the EQC, and okay. uh, you know it was it was quite a surprise. It was quite a bold statement from you when you uh, when you unveiled this car to press and to the country, and you said, "Look, not only are we just showing this as an idea, but we have a very clear roadmap and a plan." Of course, nobody could have preempted this situation today. And I know the car was supposed to arrive in April. So since that is the most imminent one, let me ask you straight away about the uh, top three finalists from the World Luxury Car. Well, I mean, uh, you will appreciate uh, April. Uh, I, I don't think we'll be able to do that. Yeah, I mean, I was really not only committing in, in January, which is uh, unusual for us, you're right, that, uh, that we commit a date and we did really work along all these lines, because the one thing is the car, the other uh, is we need to be ready in the network, we need to be ready with our overall offerings. Um, and we had prepared everything, we were quite far ahead, uh, middle of March, however, uh, quite frankly, it will push us out uh, the, other, the one or the other week uh, till we actually can do it. Well, we just saw it cruising on the screen, so I had switched to some footage of the EQC and uh, having driven the car, I can tell you that I'm totally excited and very much looking forward to that. I mean, at this point, I'm just looking forward to driving anything, but uh, but yes, the EQC <laughs> would be... Well, now, now driving would be actually ideal because I have never seen the roads like this, yeah, so oh, that's if true. we had the permission, yeah, then I would love to drive down the Pune Bombay Highway 
uh, but unfortunately, there's some limitations at the moment. Yeah. Some limitations indeed. All right. I've, like I said, I've promised questions. And so I'm going to quickly take a couple of questions because there were a lot, of course, to do with upcoming launches and the EQC was one of them. So I'm going to scroll all the way back up. This is an interesting one. Uh, there's a car that you showed at the Auto Expo. And so this relates to that. Uh, it's Srinath who says, I own a Mercedes CLA 200. With the arrival of the A-Class limousine, is there any possibility of stopping the CLA class in the future? I know you got asked this during the Auto Expo, but you want to clarify that one? I mean, we will focus this year on the A-Sedan in the launch. Yeah? Uh, the car has... Uh, by Our related question is from Niaz, and by the way, we again had uh, footage of the A-Class sedan uh, running on the screen right now. Uh, Niaz says, A45 AMG plans, hatchback please. <laughs> I'm with him on that. I have a the hatchback. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, it, hatchback is one of these questions which polarizes a lot, yeah, I mean... Uh... with, with uh, our recent uh, situation, uh, we will fo focus um, in, in that segment on, on the uh, limousine and we take it from there. All right, that's, uh, that's fair enough, I suppose. And uh, let me see, we've got more questions then. Uh, there's also a lot of people who are asking about, uh, well, interestingly, some of the stuff that you spoke about, there were questions. So let me quickly also sort of refresh that. Uh, Kiran saying, what's the plan for all your employees to be financially secure? So. That's an interesting uh, question. Yeah, I mean, right now, everyone is working from home at full pay. So we have no intent to uh, to, to change that. Um, at present, we will continue with the employment we have, and we will also continue pay wages and salaries as, as per normal from home. One thing is clear, um, time will tell how the rebound of the business will be, how the rebound of the company will be, um, and we have to secure then at, at the end also the viability of the business. So um, I think uh, whilst we have a clear view on the next couple of months, uh, and I'm absolutely clear, uh, we continue with the employments we have at the moment, we continue with the payments we have, it will all depend on also in new hiring in production areas and so forth, it will really depend on um, how, how, the, uh, how the industry comes back and how rapidly we get back to a uh, kind of normal situation. All right. Interestingly, uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of people who are already appreciating some of the measures that you've already spoken about. So I can see a lot of appreciation coming in uh, for you and, and of course, your initiatives uh, on that front. More questions about the CLA, which you've already answered, I know. And uh, uh, the EQC was something that we already spoke about, too. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that auto expo, because uh, firstly, you're the only premium player there. And then nobody really expected you to have such definitive announcements. I mean, you even had the Marco Polo uh, V-Class. You had, of course, the A sedan that we just talked about. Uh, there was the GLA. And then there was uh, the other car that I was lucky enough to have driven, the S63. Um, talk, talk to us in, in that order. Let's start with the S63. I mean, intent <laughs> of bringing something like that, which is so potent and so all-powerful. I, I think maybe I should look at it in, in total. I mean, we, we are a proud uh, a company that offers uh, the widest range of products uh, of any manufacturer uh, in India. We have 25 products and uh, the Auto Expo also was for us an opportunity
lot of uh, our SUVs where we have a lot of uh, cars also displayed. Uh, we have not only shown the new GLE, we, we showed also the, the GLC facelift again. We have the GLA uh, shown, so the whole range uh, of SUVs which uh, we have just introduced or are still slated for in the course of the year to bring about. All right. Um, well, I have to also then ask you about the GLA since, uh, you know, that's the other one that is kind of close to my heart as well because of the GLA adventure that we did. But uh, talk to us about, uh, in fact, before before you answer that, let me uh, let me see if I can get the, uh, the, the GLA video to play out as well. Uh, because that's another car that we are really excited about. This okay, so we saw the GLA there from the Auto Expo stand. Uh, uh, Tell me about that because that's an exciting segment, uh, Martin. It's one that everybody is quite excited about because of its former popularity as well with the first generation. Yeah, I think the new car has a lot of uh, additional appeal. And specifically, I think uh, it, it is more spacious and it feels more roomy uh, to, to the customer. It's uh, the styling itself. Uh, the MBUX uh, as features there will really make the car stand out. We have already uh, received a lot of positive feedback for our uh, user interface, the MBUX and the connected car features there at, at, as such. And that built into uh, a, 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 an SUV, uh, entry SUV we offer there will be, I think, a very successful offering. It's a huge step up from the current GLA, I have to be quite honest there. Uh, and also in terms of specs, uh, we didn't save here uh, on anything. It will be a very, very nice car. Um, and I'm, I'm confident we'll hit a, a strong market there. Everyone knows that uh, in the SUV segment, uh, we, we have a strong foothold um, already. GLC, GLE, very strong on also GLS. And I think it is time for us with the GLA uh, to, to um, uh, how can I say, to stabilize, stabilize and further grow that segment um, in that area. A lot of people continuing to still say uh, hello and good afternoon to you, Martin. So you've got lots of uh, Mercedes fans as well, I must tell you. In fact, a very interesting comment. It's not a question, but uh, it, it's a nice, uh, very sweet thing that I just read, which I must tell you as well. Uh, Pratap says, I presently drive a Maruti Suzuki Eco, but one day I must buy a Mercedes. I mean, that's... that's. I would wish, and that, that brings us always back to when I was asked about Auto Expo, for example. Why do you go to the Auto Expo? You also alluded to that to some extent. Uh, others don't. Um, I strongly believe our brand uh, is very strong and it's a lot of uh, aspirational value to the brand and that's why I also think we need to be there uh, for the customers and the aspirational if they buy it now or in future at the end the love uh, for the brand uh, is there and we want to support that and that's for example also one of the reasons why I was always strong uh, that Auto Expo is a good forum for everyone and, and when we saw how packed our our, our stalls was, I mean, or it, it was extremely packed all the time. Yeah. And for sure, there is a lot of uh, customers of other brands who look at our vehicles and maybe have the idea some point in time, if I can, if I want to, if I can convince my family, I go for one of these cars as well. And I would love to do uh, to see them joining the Mercedes family. I'm sure you will. Uh, you know, there's a nice question that I, I know you've already answered, but I'll just acknowledge it. Sparsh said that due to the lockdown, will there be any changes for the roadmap and timelines to launch the uh, A sedan? So I know you've already addressed that. Another interesting question from Aditya, how will you attract uh, the customer to start investing in a luxury product like Mercedes post the lockdown? Well, that, that's a very difficult question. That's also in the current uh, situation. I mean, we clearly can understand that the priorities of our customers is, is first on on, on being uh, safe, on their well-being of their families. Um, but we also believe, um, you know, we all, and I can speak for myself, uh, we all have that feeling this thing needs to be over at some point in time. Um, and even if it opens gradually, we were, we everything longs at the end uh, to some kind of normal situation. So I would think uh, there will the desire of, uh, um, of, of uh, owning a car, of using a, a luxury car, is not going away, it is deferred. What I'm hoping for is with our new models coming and we have 
so many beautiful new models now also coming, uh, we will see some uh, drive, some bus, and it will entice uh, also customers uh, to say, okay, let me also uh, take, uh, take a chance and get one of these new cars. Uh, and the new models, our new product lineup will definitely help here a lot. I'm very convinced about that. Oh, absolutely. And I, I can vouch for that, having sort of been privy to some of those plans. Um, a follow-up question to that is uh, from Shantini. Sir, any specific message from your side for dealer partners of Mercedes-Benz taking the current situation into consideration? Can't be easy for them. Of course. I mean, I think uh, the current uh, situation puts everyone under massive stress. I mean, as individuals, we worried about our safety. Um, as companies, we worried about our survival in many sense. And I think uh, that's also equally true for, for the dealer network. I mean, no cars being sold, no cars being serviced. Uh, number one problem is liquidity, cash. Uh, so it is, first of all, it's very important to uh, be able to sustain uh, through these times. Um, and we have made sure uh, that our network um, has liquidity uh, to survive the next couple of weeks by mostly by processing uh, and speeding up uh, um, dealer relationships and payments we we had uh, wanted to do to the dealers uh, at a later point in time. So we, I think in terms of cash, uh, we have taken care of the dealers for the immediate need. However, uh, it is obviously a joint work between dealers and us to make sure that we uh, have uh, sustained profitability now going forward. We will certainly see uh, that it will take some time for uh, the numbers to come back. That will put pressure onto the system, that will put pressure uh, onto inventories, that will put pressure onto um, efficiencies. And we have engaged and will continue to engage with the dealers uh, to see what we can do in order to reduce their fixed costs in order to support efficiency generation. What can the manufacturer do? What can the dealers do? I would say in the past we have proven to be strong partners uh, for the dealers. Uh, and and in often uh, it also feels like a family between dealer partners and us. And in the same spirit, we're trying to, to weather this storm now uh, to, to find, I mean, everyone has, has some skin in the game. Um, of course, we cannot put dealers risk-free as we are not risk-free. We are all under um, a big pressure, but it will be important to, to work uh, as partners to look into how can we improve uh, fixed cost positions, how can we improve efficiencies, what can we do in terms of uh, targets that we allocate and making sure that the dealers have reasonable earnings. So it will be a, a, a work which will uh, keep us busy for, for several months. I'm, I'm very convinced about that. Yeah. And, uh, well, you know how they always talk about the Indian consumer being extremely shrewd and, and very, uh, uh, you know, sort of smart about their purchase decisions. Uh, in line with that kind of thought is, a, is another follow-up question to what you were just speaking about from Gurpreet. Uh, hello, sir. My question is, will customers get additional discounts or benefit after the lockdown as the market resumes? Well, I would say the first thing for us is to honor the benefits we had given to customers who couldn't take their cars. So we have that, that was the first thing we needed to do. Um, the, um, and I think we have, we have deployed there as, as schemes that will, as soon as customers can come back uh, and will be able to take their cars, will take care of that part. Going forward, obviously, um, we will have a lot of new models, so I will be really hard pressed to offer discounts on those cars. Um, and also on the existing models, we'll have to, uh, you have to understand, we also adjust then the volumes we have. Uh, we have reduced production, we make sure that uh, at the end we can su uh, supply to the demand. And quite frankly, it's not our aim, uh, sorry, uh, to discount uh, our cars massively. I would want to say here, um, you have to also take it uh, from that sense. It discounts are, in the first hand, they feel fine. On the other hand, they have a lot of disadvantages. Every discount a customer get devalues the car and it devalues uh, the discount uh, other customers, uh, the, 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 the car uh, other customers own already. So the residual values get under pressure. Discounts are not ideal for, for dealer profitability and for manufacturer profitability. So what we have to create is, and we have to say a Mercedes is a car, is a precious car, it is a car of value, and we will offer discounts uh, mostly where we, uh, where we uh, want to support sales 
in models like in run out, run out situations or where we have situations like a demand has uh, has a dip for some time, but the overall intent is uh, to sell a car um, by its features, uh, to sell it because it's a Mercedes mm -hmm. with design and his its features, and we deem them to be fair uh, uh, priced uh, in that range, and we really uh, don't want to sell on discounts. So uh, I, I, it's probably not the answer you would want to hear, and uh, for sure you can try your luck at any dealership. But if you look at, at from my angle, from a bigger picture, uh, we want to, if you, to be sure that when you buy a Mercedes, it's something that has value not only when you buy it, but also over time. Um, and obviously, value is also created by the fact that uh, it cannot be discounted and be uh, too cheaply purchased, and then it also keeps its value over time. That's fair, and uh, I know we've heard this from you even in in regular circumstances. So of course, why should that change? Uh, there have been two or three people who've talked about the whole diesel uh, question. And so I'm going to read out one of those questions because they're all related. Uh, currently, 75% of your product portfolio is diesel, but your rivals are moving towards petrol models. How do you perceive the petrol diesel percentage uh, to actually pan out? I think uh, we will continue for our brand. We'll continue to see a lot of diesel uh, engines and a lot of sales of diesel engines. Gradually, uh, in the entry segment, uh, the, the petrol vehicle where you have uh, low, low mileage um, and the petrol engine being a little bit uh, more affordable is definitely a, a proposition that develops. <laughs> However, in, in the luxury segment, in the SUVs um, and also in our luxury sedans, I would think uh, the diesel has a strong future. It is, uh, it is in terms of uh, uh, mileage, in terms of uh, pollution, uh, CO2 footprint, uh, definitely uh, the preferred option uh, we would want to sell. So I would think gradually we will see uh, some more petrol engines coming also in the entry segment, but I'm also very uh, bullish on uh, diesel um, in, our, in the mi mainstay of our portfolio. We know customer want uh, the fuel efficient cars. We know uh, they get more and more uh, conscious about CO2 uh, carbon footprint. And we also know that with BS6 and specifically the technology we employ here, we, uh, which is based on EO6 D10, which uh, is far overachieving emission values on particle matters and NOx uh, compared to uh, the BS6 regime itself. Uh, we know we have very clean engines uh, that can, uh, on pollution levels, definitely compete with a petrol engine. So we see a lot of benefits uh, in mileage. Uh, carbon footprint and so forth. And I believe that a lot of customers will see that benefit as well. Uh, Martin, there are again two related questions. So I'm going to sort of combine them if, if I can. Firstly, I should request you to hang on with us a little longer. We've already kind of gone over time, but there's so many questions coming in. So I hope you don't mind. Um, the first one talks about, uh, you know, once the lockdown is over in India, other countries are maybe still in a critical stage then will it affect your production cycles? And the second related question is also to do with uh, the same situation. Once the lockdown is over, um, then uh, basically what does this do for your annual sales targets? This one came from Deep. Yeah, I mean, uh, quite clearly, uh, every country is in a different cycle. Yeah, I mean, some of them are uh, pre-peak, peak, and then in, in say, post-peak and some kind of recovery, and then maybe some normalcy again. So we see every country is swinging in a different way, um, and that has impact on their uh, on, on, on the country situation. I mean, we, we all look to China, we look to South Korea, we see what's happening there, we look to the US, and uh, and for India. I mean, also for India, it's not quite clear where we are. I personally would think we are pre-peak um, of, of uh, the, the situation itself. So we, we will have to monitor the next couple of weeks how things are going. Uh, we have at present, we have uh, uh, our supply chain uh, and we have stock uh, to build our cars we have planned at the moment for the near future. So we could start production after lockdown um, uh, appropriately. However, we heavily re relying on uh, supplies from the different countries, and it really will really depend then um, on the lockdown situation there. I mean, every country is in some kind of, uh, most of the countries actually are at the moment in some kind of uh, closing scenario. So anything we get from China shouldn't be a problem. We'll see how things develop uh, from, from Europe and the US. Obviously, for the, uh, for the SUVs, we need the US. 
But I would think uh, also there uh, we'll get into uh, into situations um, of recovery, um, and then um, we we will certainly see supply uh, being set up again. It is for for every manufacturer the core concern, and that is of course. Uh, in, 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 in producing cars now to have the parts, ava parts available. So I would clearly assume uh, that uh, the focus that uh, everyone puts on this will then help us to start up again. It is possible that there is, uh, there is then the one or other model uh, having some disruptions uh, and it will take time uh, to, to catch up, uh, but we have to see it closer to the time when, when we get there. In the, in the immediate term, we have the material we need uh, to start production and then we work. We will work to make sure that we don't have to stop production again. Then we might prioritize the one or the other model based on avail availability. But overall, I think we should be able to secure uh, a suitable supply chain. This includes even the newer models like the GLE, right? You it will that. also include the newer models, but obviously, for sure, that puts stress on the system. So we'll have to see how to prioritize. And I'm really not in a position to to know right now. Uh, how we how we will deal eventually with that. I know uh, it's very competent teams globally who permanently work on that. So I'm I'm confident that we find some solutions, but it will also mean some juggling uh, and and, and reprioritization uh, as such. All right. Um, now let's get to a little bit more of the the positive side of the current situation, if you will, and away from some of the the, the doom and gloom. Uh, Martin, how have you been keeping uh, yourself busy? I mean, what's uh, part of your daily routine now that you could not do when you were in the office? I mean, you know, the office is not the problem, but uh, <laughs> I spent almost uh, two and a half day, uh, hours a day uh, driving to Chakan and back every day. So it's now, easily yeah. two and a half hours. Yeah. And I think the biggest benefit I take out of that, instead of sitting in the car driving back in the evening, I actually take uh, the exercise uh, home training bike yeah, and I do my uh, freewheeling as such yeah, and I get at least uh, 45 minutes of exercise so today I'm I'm on day 20 I can do that yeah so I, because and I cannot remember I had ever a streak like this that I would do 45 minutes of exercise every day for some people that seems maybe very normal for me actually I, I struggle to prioritize like that uh, all the time with all the traveling and time in between uh, so so uh, I have yeah. to be frank here uh, I, I use that uh, clearly as an opportunity. On the other hand, I mean, uh, the work, the the way to the office is really just 30 seconds away. So I uh, so that uh, saves a lot of time. I also don't travel so much, uh, obviously, at all now. Uh, so uh, say to dealers to to Europe or whatever, it's all not happening. Gives me a lot of additional time as well. And I have to say, I spent that then also having breakfast in the morning on the balcony hearing birds uh, sing in Pune, which I didn't even know that there is any because of the ambient noise we usually yeah. have. Yeah? Uh, so it is very different atmosphere, which is for me also very positive to see how nature actually strikes back to some extent uh, with clean air and animals and, and, and all of that. And then if, I, uh, if, if the schedule allows, uh, well, I will also do a little much more uh, cooking than I would usually do. So probably you know, um, I'm I'm really enjoying uh, preparing lunch or dinner. So I would say every day I find a moment to prepare something uh, for for my wife and uh, my son who is with us at the moment. So I think that's uh, a lot of uh, added benefit to me as well. Quite quite honest, and I enjoy that part. Yeah, but I have also to be honest. I miss uh, going to the office. Yeah, and being then physically uh, the interaction with the people, the physical interaction, and also with journalists, with customers, with dealers. It's not just work, it's also social interaction, uh, which gives a lot of satisfaction in terms of, uh, you know, there is fun, there is uh, creativity, um, and it's much more difficult to uh, to reproduce that in, in front of screens. Uh, a, a vivid discussion uh, in front of uh, cell phone screens is, is really not the same. We're, we're uh, trying today, we're, we're giving it a yeah, shot. We do, we do. <laughs> You know, uh, have like six people in the room now, yeah? yeah. Um, then things get much more structured, which is positive. But I mean, the bantering, the uh, and, like, the little jokes here and there, it's, it's just more difficult because yeah. with a little bit of time like here and there uh, in in the transmission. And so so it's definitely not the same. Uh, but okay, we adjust to that and, and we take the fun where we can. Yeah. 
you know, it was nice of you to include journalists and the people that you miss because I'm sure there's a little part of you that's very relieved that you don't have to deal with us. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think, honestly, it's a lot of fun also. Yeah, I mean, most of the yeah. time when we meet, there is some uh, interaction, there is some bantering, there is some, and it's some talks and some small talks. And if you think of events we do together, yeah, I mean, if you think of, uh, like, we had the little Oktoberfest here, or we have the UKC launch, we get the journalists together, and there's an official part, there's a lot of unofficial yeah. Uh, situations as well, where we just uh, no, we always end up nice to say, uh, and I enjoy that part, uh, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah, no, we always end up having a nice time, and I can vouch for that. Not just to be polite, I mean, we literally, I think your teams always put together some great opportunities for us to interact. It's a lot of fun, uh, Shekhar and uh, Vignesh and everybody else. Uh, you know, they, they, I know they go out of their way to to make it an interesting experience. It's not just about meeting, and so, so oh, of course, yeah, of I, course, I, I miss yeah. that too. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of friendship also, I see. Yeah, and and you know, same. Uh, when when uh, we go to dealers, there's customer events with customers. It's very nice, I have to say. Yeah, there's so many people you hear to know what what they do, what what they're interested in. You talk about cars, you talk about families, a lot of interaction, and and I find that very very enriching, so to say. And that's a little bit cut down, to be honest. Now, yeah. <laughs> you know, I I've been cooking as well the last few days. So what's what's the one nice thing that you've made that you that you enjoyed the most? Oh, there is no such uh, thing. I, I, I usually, usually, you know. Are you saying we, everything was nice, or are you saying nothing was nice? Especially, I should ask my wife. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, you know, usually it's some some veggies, and I, I I do it a little bit the Asian way. Yeah, so it's a little lighter. Yeah, um, and uh, so, so with uh, that's a lot of things I do short. Uh, uh, cook something, yeah. Then my son, he wants always meat, yeah. So and that's uh, that's a little bit harder, yeah. So, yeah. but we find some answers there sometimes as well. So I think overall uh, I enjoy it, and uh, I have to say, supply is for us is 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 secured. There's a, a good uh, possibility to order uh, to get uh, yeah. stuff brought at home. So we're not suffering from that leg. I actually think we have in some instances more than in our fridge than we usually have because. Uh, we eat always in now, yeah, and there's no going out or whatever. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's definitely a positive side of it, yeah. Yeah, no, of course. And, uh, you know, um, it's, it's great that your son is with you and that he made it here before, you know, any of the lockdowns happened. So it's good for you to be able to spend time with him. I, I assume you're in what is now your home office, of course. So, uh, oh, yes, I am. Yeah. I'm going to go full frame to you. I, I'm very curious about some of the pictures behind you, if you can share some of those with us, maybe. Well, they're not set up for this meeting or for this conference. They're always there. Well, uh, you know, what didn't make it to the office. So it's stuff I carried from from previous uh, previous locations, mostly about meeting with dealers, uh, with uh, with uh, teams, and uh, or driving events. Yeah, I mean, you know, this this one. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can see that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, as a, nice as a massive, massive winter driving event we always uh, have had in, in, in China. It's in the north of China uh, and, and we have uh, Fedris cars that was an SL uh, and then we shoot over, uh, shoot it over ice, uh, yeah. driving there, drifting, uh, doing everything you Lots can do in real, uh, in unreal life I should say and unfortunately these times are gone at the moment as well. But I keep some of these memories then here uh, behind me. Um, and, and it obviously makes you long for, for these situations now again, the drive events and uh, the action are in the cars. So I'm really looking forward to, to getting back to, to this normal as well. Yeah. You, you and me both, Martin. Uh, I know we need to wrap this up. There's, some very, there's a lot of appreciation coming in for what you've been speaking about. Um, Arun, by the way, says MBUX, the MBUX experience is excellent. So you've got right. someone who likes that. Uh, there's an interesting question from Chetan. Uh, there's one from Ashutosh as well that I want to take before we wrap up. Uh, Chetan's question first, I think most would want to go out and drive cars as soon as the lockdown is over. I'm just talking about that. Is Mercedes-Benz, uh, are the service outlets ready to handle any of the issues like dead battery rejuvenation, etc., etc., once the lockdown lifts? Yes, yes. I already mentioned that we prepare already to ramp up uh, accordingly. Um, the customer service centers, they, all, they will all be available. I mean, obviously, assuming that it's an area in a, uh, where uh, not, uh, restrictions are happening. I mean, it's so possible that even the lockdown is, is opened uh, totally, that uh, some districts or cities or states are, are still uh, with restrictions. But we have roadside assistance uh, activated. 
Uh, so with the normal reach out to our customer service uh, functions, um, it, it is accessible and it will be available. I, I had I almost stopped you there because I, I just saw a nice message pop up, which is, uh, you know, brought a big smile on my face and I'm sure it will to yours. It's uh, Maria who says, proud of you, Dad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, she is. Uh, she's in the Netherlands actually, and she threatened me to uh, listen to me. Yeah, so that's our oldest daughter, Maria. Yeah, she she is studying in in Leiden in the Netherlands, close to Amsterdam, um, and she is following it on Instagram. I didn't tell anyone from the family. Yeah, uh, but she follows me. So thanks, Maria. Yeah, and I'll call you later. Yeah, and thank you from us as well, Maria. It's great that you joined us here today, and uh, stay safe. A big hello from all of us to you. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, la the, the, the last question I guess I should take is, uh, is Mercedes looking to increase its digital spends or investing in digital initiatives such as maybe online launches? That's from Ashutosh. I mean, uh, that is definitely an area we look into. How can we make the customer journey, um, how can I say, so that it is appealing to the customer under the new normal. And for the next foreseeable future, uh, clearly uh, customers want to uh, we expect customers to want to have more uh, online interaction. So we're preparing for that. We already launched a couple of months ago um, our online car, uh, online sales platform yes. for uh, mostly we have used cars there. Now we'll come with new cars all in as well. So the purchase uh, selection and uh, purchase process will be massively supported also by our online um, websites. And uh, the con connection to the dealers uh, we'll also have some elements of that. So, of course, that's part of what we prepare at the moment. Um, we will not only make sure that safety protocols are happening at the customers, at the dealers, uh, accordingly in the vehicles, but also we'll offer uh, more and more digital channels uh, in the ne next days and weeks to come. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think uh, that's, you know, eventually what everybody's really looking forward to, just everything getting back to normal. Uh, Martin, I know we, I could go on talking with you forever and, uh, you know, this was supposed to be a half hour chat. It's already gone to over 45 minutes. That, oh, that's yeah. what happens, though. I think when we catch up, we tend to, uh, you know, talk about lots of things. Yeah, uh, and maybe we have another beer then. Yeah. <laughs> and, and absolutely, I can't wait for the time when we can actually sit together and, uh, you know, sort of uh, get that drink. It will be really nice. Uh, German beer, no doubt. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah, we'll see what we do. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. No, but, you know, uh, it's it's a time when all of us are extremely concerned and worried and uh, at the same time uh, trying to keep a semblance of normalcy going. I can see that you've really worked hard at that. Um, it's great that you shared that with us today as well. So I really appreciate that um, and your time. I mean, it, it's great that you uh, took all the questions from everybody as well. There's been so many people asking. There are many more questions I couldn't even ask you, but uh, but really, truly appreciate this. It's been fun. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Sid. Yeah, thank you very much. And thanks for to everyone listening, including my daughter. <laughs> we are very happy that she was listening. And uh, yes, when you do speak with her, please tell her thank you uh, for, do, yeah. for messaging and telling us that she is, she is watching. That's very sweet. We really appreciate it. And please stay safe, you, your family. Um, safe. Keep, safe uh, to your audience, to everyone. Yeah, stay safe so that we get over that crisis uh, and can do virtual hugs then again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, keep cooking. I, I, maybe I want to take you up on that sometime. Maybe we can okay. do something together as well. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Cheers, uh, Martin. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Martin Schwenk, the uh, Managing Director and CEO at Mercedes-Benz India, sharing so much with us right now in terms of what's happening at Mercedes-Benz, even what's happening with him at home, and certainly, uh, you know, the outlook for where we could go from here in terms of business, in terms of product. Uh, before you all sign off and before any of you hang up, I have a little surprise for you. So don't go away just yet because, you know, uh, this whole thing started as a crazy experiment. Uh, it's uh, so far working. This is episode three of Freewheeling. So uh, please continue to support this because we'd love your feedback on how we can make it better. I mean, there are all sorts of little glitches that are going to happen, but we're already lined up with episode four. Uh, that's coming up tomorrow. So here's a little preview as to what you can expect.
right, so 3 p.m. tomorrow, that's going to be Mr. Vikram Kirloskar. Again, an old friend, an old acquaintance of the entire auto industry, of course, and very much uh, the person who's been one of the driving forces behind Toyota um, in India. And so, um, you know, this is going to be Toyota Kirloskar Motor India. So it's going to be an interesting chat for sure. So I'd love for all of you to join me again for that. That's 3 p.m. on Friday and uh, would love for you to join, like I said. So thank you for watching today. And, uh, you know, the message from all of us remains, please stay safe. Uh, don't do anything silly. If you step out for any essentials, uh, please wear your seat belts, wear your helmets, wear your masks, carry your sanitizers. I know it sounds repetitive, but uh, you know what? It's important. Can't reiterate any of this enough. And uh, thank you for all the feedback as well and all your questions. So I will see you tomorrow afternoon on another episode of uh, Freewheeling. Once again, from the entire team who brought this to you, including all of the uh, people at Car and Bike who are working remotely to package some of this. Thank you and stay safe. Bye-bye.